This video is something I'm very excited about. For the first time I'm showing off the very final design of the Space Bears. I know I said that last time, but really I guess that was the color scheme and aesthetic. This time I have the final design elements, the bits, which for those of you who don't know, and I announced in the last video on this channel, is our first ever product in collaboration with Puppets War. So go check it out, links in the description. You can buy the resin casts or the STLs from Puppets War, or if you have a My Mini Factory account and a 3D printer, you can also get it on My Mini Factory. And on top of the whole set of Space Bear bits. There's also the bust, which I'm super, super excited about. So if you're not into the idea of building an army or a whole squad or something, you can still get a display mini to paint, or if you're not into painting, it just looks bloody awesome. But if you're not the crafty type and you do love the Space Bears, you can also get a poster. Any and all support is a huge support to the channel and of course Puppets War for helping make this possible. So let's just jump into it. I'm going to start off by converting some of my previously made Space Bears. So I'm just going to swap out the plain Puppets war shoulders with my custom puppets war shoulders tear out the bodily glued chains and add our new beautifully sculpted chains which by the way can be easily shaped once you glue one side in place by using a hair dryer or a heat gun you could immerse it in hot water for a little period of time by the way with a little bit of heat applied though the chain is fairly delicate if you're careful you can quite easily put it into place to take the shape of different positions so that you can have more organic poses I replaced all of the heads with my custom helmets and all of the swords with my custom claws. And they're not going to be the crispest and most detailed models simply because I've already obviously done some converting and painting and I'm repurposing them. But that's the charm and the advantage of Space Bears because they're so design heavy and lean really on texture and silhouette. While you can get super nitty gritty and detailed, if you just want a battle ready army of bears, it's really easy to make them quick and make them look cool. So let's jump into making a Space Bear Sergeant from scratch. But before I get stuck into building and converting my Space Marine, I actually roll out a little lump of mixed green stuff in a sheet of baking paper to come back to later. I grabbed the sergeant of the assault intercessors and started piecing them together as you would any 40k space marine, at least up to the point where the arms and the head would attach. This is where you need to get brave a little bit. We got to get rid of these default shoulders. You can be pretty hacky. You, you have to be quite brave. There's barely any upper arm left and you do have to lean quite heavily on super glue. It's also worth mentioning, and you'll see this as I progress, that I snap apart a bunch of my poses quite often and re-glue in slightly different positions. I'm personally really really quite fussy about the silhouette, about the stance. The pose has to feel right, it has to feel strong. That's why I keep angling the elbow out slightly. You're repositioning the arm very slightly. And it's also why I went back to the legs and kind of needlessly tore them up to separate the stance and create a much stronger pose. You don't have to do this. In fact, if you're not confident in the hobby and in converting, you can just use the default pose and arm positions. It's entirely fine to do that. It looks good. This this is just my personal want to make everything feel extra custom and extra berry. So with the pose in the place that I'm happy with and the fine tuning of the gluing and positioning done, it's time to move on to converting. So remember that green stuff we rolled out? Bring that back. It's going to be like in this sort of half hardened state, which is perfect. This is where you can easily chop it up, put it in place and mold it and it's going to hold its position even if you thin it out and start adding waves. Now custom sculpting green stuff into sort of tunics and cloth is something you don't have to do, much like changing the pose, but I really like to super customize my stuff and I do it by cutting the sort of a tails of a back cloak first. You'll notice I tease it out and stretch it by hand, wetting my fingers as I go just so it doesn't stick to my fingers. But the green stuff sticks to super glue really, really quickly. So just by gluing that in the belt line and gluing the additional pieces to it, it grabs real quick. I push it in place just to make sure it holds. And then I can pull on the other end and gently create some curves and folds for like the waving in the wind look. With all of those in place, creating a sense of motion and wind, I glue one end of a chain and wrap around the waist three times. Times. The purpose of this to obviously help hide some of my bodgy green stuff gluing, but also because one of the design elements I really like with the bears is that they're thick. You can add like a thick over the screen there maybe. And some like sexy music. <laughs> Next, the iconic 
hood, or at least it's iconic to me. Taking two pinches of each side of Milliput and mixing it, I mold it into a little sort of croissant shape. But then pushing it down and getting a sharp sculpting tool, I just gently poke in and create the start of that texture going from the inside where the head is all the way out to the outer edges. And then I go over the whole thing again, this time poking in and sort of flicking up to create a much more rough and disheveled fur texture. The first pass adds sort of the lines and general shape and molds it. The second really makes it grizzly fur. But that's actually the conversion and creation of the space bear done. And he looks cool, but he looks even cooler on an epic base. I make my space bear bases with this fairly high density cork. Super glue dries and bonds the cork to itself really quickly and really effectively. So I just put two layers of the cork and fairly roughly tear apart at the edges. I also like to make sure it doesn't look like cork because cork looks like cork. One of the ways I avoid this is to not have too many flat layers of cork. I like to sometimes cut in on an angle and glue an angled sheet of cork poking out like this. And with that in place, I grab tweezers and gouge into and pull out all the way around so that there isn't a single flat surface of cork left. That leaves a really nice rocky texture and allows me to shape the base to really fit the model. And finally, to make sure it doesn't look like cork, I save little bits from different packs, little shovels and backpacks and tiny blades. And they're really useful for stuff like this, grabbing one or two little things to add as a design accent, a little garnish on your base, as well as small cork bark that is a slightly different and less textured corky looking type of cork, gluing those around just like small rocks. And just like that, in the space of 10 minutes, I have a freaking awesome base to make my freaking awesome sergeant look like a badass. Now let's paint him. Obviously having based him in a flat black, a few thin coats, I get into the reds using a Citadel Mephiston red as the base. Next, I lay in a layer of contrast, Flesh Terror's red. This really adds a luster to the red that I love, really intensifies it. And then going back to the original red to sort of flatten it out a bit, and gently adding some highlights with some Wild Rider red. I then move on to my dryad bark, which is the base for the fur around the collar. This is the darkest brown, but I work my way up to a very, very light, almost like a tan color. The next layer is a dry brushed Mournfang brown, just fairly broadly applied, but there's still some darkness in the deeper crevices. Next up, Deathclaw brown, and this is where I start to a little more specifically apply using a smaller brush and highlight all the little areas of the fur. And last but not least, and this is my favorite bit, because it really does make it look like grizzly bear fur, which is what my design was sort of modeled on around the collar, the base Morgast bone color from Citadel and literally just touching on the tips of the ends of the fur, more towards the top than the bottom, just so that the eye is sort of guided in a nice way and it picks up light where it's meant to. Next, I move on to the brassy gold metallics with a base of Warblock bronze. With the base of my brassy gold down, I mix equal parts Genna's gold with the warp lock bronze and create sort of the mid-tones and highlights of most of the brassy gold color. I call it brassy gold because I don't want it to look too much like gold. I want it to be a little grittier, but I do use a straightforward Genna's gold for the highlights of all these areas, just to a small degree for the most part, except for the shoulders and that front collar chain, which I do want to sort of stand out more than the other areas. Next, we move on to the metallics. In general, I use a gradient of these four colors. Iron Warriors at the darkest through Lead Bleacher, Iron Breaker, and then Rune Fang Steel. And just dry brushing in that order all the way up to the highest of highlights, mainly on the claws and the edge of the gun. God damn, these claws are looking so cool. Oh, I love this. Next, using the Eshen Gray, I go around and do most of the highlights and then use Dawnstone to just do the tippy tops and highlights of some of those edge highlights. Finally, I come back and add some detail to the red, adding a little more contrast, especially now that most of the areas have been divided quite cleanly. It's also worth mentioning that I try and color the cloth to be a darker and slightly more earthy red uh, than the red of the armor and the metal. Now, in this time around, I did that by sort of giving it a wash with a, a brown ink from Vallejo, but in future, I'm just gonna mix that into it as a base and then highlight up to more of the mid reds, but not giving it too much punch. Now onto some of the finer details. Now at this point, 
I was running really short of time because of my commitments in the studio. Forgive me, but I did get help from Murray here, who's done an amazing job painting the face and the sergeant's shield area. He helped me with the other units that aren't this sergeant and also did the bases. And just check out his awesome and super detailed face and shield paint job. In the past, I've used Streaking Grime to add this really cool gritty texture, but I think AK Interactive has changed their recipe because it's looking greener than it ever has. And I have bought like five recent ones and they all look way different for some reason. So to get around this, I mix one part Streaking Grime and one part Rust Streaks. This creates pretty much the same tone that I had before that I airbrush over all the models. Oh, and by the way, after doing the streaking grime, I had some of this leftover stuff in my airbrush, so I made sure to keep it aside, of course, for all my future Space Bears ambitions in a clearly labeled container, which it turns out is a little squirty bottle, and that applies pretty well in lieu of an airbrush. More heavily and less controlled than I'd like, but a pretty cool way to apply streaking grime in a pinch. This is the fun part of streaking grime. Using white spirits and a woolly dauber and a mix of cotton buds, I slowly pull away the grime of the streaking grime, revealing some of the original punch of the colors and detail and allowing it to fold into the recesses, but it also dries super matte, creating an awesome, gritty, grim, dark, earthy aesthetic. Now that they're coming together, they are looking a little bit flat, which is where this very last step comes in. Starting on the base with a ghrelin earth, I paint heavily on the top areas and dry brush downwards on the sides to create a little bit of light contrast throughout the piece, but also in a way that's gonna dry and keep some texture on there. I quickly paint and dry brush some of those features and details around the base and weather those up super quick with a little bit of typhus corrosion, technical paint from Citadel. Then using a light bluey gray, specifically the heavy blue gray from Vallejo, I dry brush downwards and mainly cover the top areas of the base, which will help accentuate a bit of a frosty look when add snow later. Cutting a row of tufts in half so that I could have quite small patches of grass to have growing and peeking out of the cracks of the rocks. I shove those in place and this is where cork is quite useful because you can literally just like pin it into the cork without using too much glue. And last but certainly not least, this is the step that brings it all together, the snow. Specifically the Valhallen Blizzard by Citadel, quite heavy on the base and on the topmost surfaces, which also creates contrast as we don't have snow under the surfaces or where things are most dark already. This will create a lot of texture and make it look really wintry and cool. And then fairly generously, but calculatively, I roughly apply some of this snow on the topmost surfaces of the bear himself. That little bit of extra pop on the edges of the silhouettes, on the top of the collar, a little bit in the beard, a little bit on the shoulders, really ties him into not only the, the whole sense of being in that place, but being gritty, like he's come out of hibernation. He looks so damn cool. And I love the way that with this technique, that the sharp whites of the snow contrast with the gritty, dark, earthy textures of the grunge, the reds, the brasses, all of it. Finally, with a flat black base strip to tie it all together, my first ever fully finished, 100% complete and super epic space bear is done. And here it is. I have a full squad or kill team, which I'll be using against Dave in our upcoming kill team match. He's making a custom, super awesome tower army. And by the way, there are loads of different helmets, faces and shields as well. And I haven't used shields in this video, but I wanted to show you a preview of how I intend to use them in future additions to my army. This is my custom blade guard. I'm gonna call my custom blade guard the maulers because they've got mauls and bears, maul things. <laughs> so I hope this video has been helpful to any of you interested in starting your own space bear or other 
custom chapter armor with those little helpful tricks you can use along the way to make your armies super custom, super epic, without a huge amount of time or effort or even skill involved. Now, I'm recording the end of this video after I've released the first video unveiling the return of the Space Bears, and the response has been insanely cool. I was really self-conscious about bringing the bears back because I've put a lot of work into the bits, a lot of time into the sculpts with Puppets War. I'm really grateful to our patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It enables us to do ridiculously cool and crazy projects like this. And to anyone who gets the bits or the bust or the poster, thank you so much. Like I've said from the beginning of bringing Tabletop Time back, it's all going back into Tabletop Time and I have grandiose plans. There's a bust over there. Murray's painted the bust, but he's gonna paint it again. And he's gonna show you two different methods he used to paint the bust. So you can follow along if you got the bust in the same way that I made this video for those of you who wanna follow along who got the bits. Dave is making great progress on his Tau Kill team. It's very cool and very exciting. We had a little practice run last night on Twitch. And up next on this channel is my chapter master reveal, which has already changed drastically based on some of the feedback you guys have given to me from the previous Space Bears launch video. A lot of you loved the Space Bears bits and also the Native American design aesthetic I brought in, but also expressed that there's a lack of Native American faces, which I totally get. I can't believe I didn't see that because I was so focused on it being a Space Wolf successor chapter that then they look like Space Wolves. But I've got some really cool ways that I'm actually incorporating that feedback, not only into the chapter master, but into the chapter as a whole. So it's going to stay the Space Bears I've already introduced to you that you love, but you're going to see some really cool elements in there that really embrace that feedback. And use this as an opportunity to take that feedback and add more representation into our little addition to the hobby. Thank you so much for everything. I'm so freaking excited. This is so dumb. I'm a grown ass man. And I, <laughs> it's weirdly cool in every way I could have ever have dreamed of and beyond. So thank you. We have a tradition of ending in an awkward ending sort of way because it's, I don't know, we try not to take ourselves too seriously, but um, I think every now and then we have to bypass that and just be grateful because sometimes I'm, I'm just, I don't have words, which I guess adds to the awkward ending vibe, which is good if I don't know what to, if I just cut off.